now we know the basics or the introduction, we know the structural formulas, we should be able to know the actual functional groups, right, one by one. Although, I'm not going to discuss it in this introductory video because by experience, first of all, there are a lot of functional groups, a lot of families, and uh, we have nomenclature for each or a naming system for each. And if we draw the structure, usually there are a lot of questions from the students who attend uh, our classes. So I think it would be better off if we review the nomenclature and the rules, the bunch of rules on nomenclature when we are in the actual classroom. Or if you have your professors, you can ask them. So you would be able to understand more how to name a particular compound or in reverse how to draw a compound based on a given name to you. So I think you would have that as quizzes sometimes. So uh, with that uh, said, the first thing we were going to discuss after the structures would be uh, several properties that we could use to describe a certain structure drawn. So first would be the ring closure because there are some compounds which are either drawn like this as in a line and some are drawn like this, meaning they form a ring. So if we have something like this, we call this a cyclic. Or we can just call this linear most of the time. Although a cyclic is a more general, more, let's say, accurate term. And this one is, of course, cyclic. There are two types of cyclic, though. You can see here all points. And uh, as we now know, these are all carbon. We say that this is carbocyclic. Later on, when we dig deeper into the discussions, we will actually know there are some cyclic compounds which are not carbon all throughout. There are some members in the ring which are not carbon. For example, this one is nitrogen, but this is part of the ring. Then we say that this is heterocyclic because there is a different or a hetero atom inside the ring and in this case the hetero atom is nitrogen making this heterocyclic now after that after talking about whether it's a ring or not we can classify also compounds based on their saturation and saturation means that each carbon is saturated or filled up with hydrogens remember for example I said that sometimes you can have all single bonds between carbon and hydrogen. The moment we add another bond between these two carbons, what will happen to the H's? Each carbon will lose one H. In this case, it will not be fully saturated with hydrogens anymore. Do you understand? So, in this case, instead of having hydrogens with the carbon, you have a double bond. And more so, if you have a triple bond, you remove even more hydrogens. So, if a carbon has a double or triple bond, it's not filled up with hydrogens technically. So you call that unsaturated. So what does that mean? The only time that a compound is considered as saturated is that if the carbon if all carbon uh in if all carbons in the molecule have a single bond. Alright, just to make that simple. Now we have a uh, we have a certain classification or we have certain adjectives for compounds based on the position of their bonds. I mean double bonds. For example, I have three examples here. Then I'm going to draw it. Now, here, what we will look at in order to classify it is the number of intervals or the number of single bonds between these two double bonds so for example in this first uh, in this first figure there is no single bond between the two double bonds they are beside each other in that say in that sense you could give this the adjective of cumulated because they have a uh, compiled together they have grouped together at the same location or almost at the similar location here there is a distance of one single bond this is the single bond between these two double bonds. If all the double bonds are separated by a single bond each, this is considered as 
conjugated. But if the two double bonds are separated by more than one double bond, for example, uh, by more than one single bond, I mean, for example, here between th these two double bonds, we have two single bonds. It's not anymore conjugated, of course, because in conjugated, we, we have only one single bond between. It's not cumulated. So if this has two or more single bonds between them, you would say that this is isolated because as it looks like, the two double bonds are isolated away from each other. All right. Later on, there is a certain property called aromaticity, but I think it's best to talk about it when we talk about the group of organic hydrocarbons. And uh, that would be it for the introduction. When we go further into the discussion for the next few videos after this, uh, first of all, you have to be a member to view them. Um, those videos will tackle about the fundamentals of all organic compounds. That would be the topic before we tackle on the families of organic compounds one by one. So I hope you understood uh, the very basic things here. And uh, I hope to see you soon. I hope you would be able to take part in our tutorials for the next few months. And I hope you learned something again in this video. Yeah. Bye.